then let's compare it to to those that don't understand what a carbon nanotube is. It's a carbon atom, which is connected to another carbon atom, and it forms a chain, which is in a circle. And then you extend this chain, and you get a chain of carbon nano. Uh, 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 atoms, and this is a carbon nanotube. So you can double the wall, and you can have twice the thickness, but there's a hole in the center, and the hole in the center can be what we call dope with uh, other material. For example, one of the uses today that they're talking about medically is to put, uh, uh, let's say, an antibiotic or an anti-cancer agent, let's look at that way, into a small carbon nanotube, and that's called doping. And then you inject that into a malignant tumor, and the uh, carbon nanotube then releases the anti-cancer drug directly into the tumor, and you don't destroy the surrounding tissue. So uh, there's lots of applications that are being talked about today, but now we can make them, but we can't make them the complex way that we find them uh, in these objects. Now, the other thing is, how do you combine a carbon nanotube into molten metal? No idea. It's a, no idea. No one, no one else has any idea either. But here it is, folks. You know, you look at it, you see it, you know, with new uh, equipment. And uh, these carbon nanotubes are then, you know, let's, let's take a wire, for example, uh, without any insulation on it. And you take the wire and you wrap two wires together, you know, and then you, you know, you continue doing this until you have, what, a cable. And then you throw some insulation on it and you got an insulated cable. So uh, this is what we find with carbon nanotube technology and these objects. Now, where do they go? They go uh, with a pattern like a circuitry. And remember, we're looking under uh, an electron microscope that's uh, looking at this about 750 to uh, 8, 8, 950 uh, uh, thousand times magnification. Time. And they run into what we call uh, orthorhombic crystals. I know that sounds uh, tremendously right. complex, but it's not. Way over uh, my head. <laughs> it's a, very, very easy to explain. It's, it's a crystal that's a rectangle. Simple. Okay. Rectangle. All right. Here's, rectangles. A question, here's a question for you. Here's a question for you, uh, Doctor. Uh, do you have any knowledge of, or guesses even, how these um, various implants interact or associate with human biology? We have some idea. Uh, we used to think that they were being powered by the nervous system, <laughs> as is UCLA now uh, powering. Um, small uh, motors to run uh, servos in uh, uh, artificial uh, prosthetic devices. Uh, but now we've kind of changed our opinion because uh, we know that you can broadcast energy. And uh, if you broadcast energy, for example, by use of a scalar wave, you can power these objects remotely. So let's just accept that as a possibility. Uh, the next thing uh, in reference to your question of how it's used in the human body, obviously these things we know are being used to relay information of uh, some kind of data, uh, a data pattern. Do, do we, how do we know that? And what, for example, those who have had the implants, what are they saying? Are they saying, I hear voices or I have ideas that I don't recognize as my own or what? Oh, that's a wonderful question. Now here, I'm going to bring it home right in your own backyard. Here it comes, sure. Stephen. We have a radio frequency detector. And we've been able to detect radio frequencies coming out of these objects. All right, stop right there. You're finally into an area where I sort of know what I'm talking about. Uh, what, what range of frequencies are you talking about and what kind of uh, emitted signal are you talking about? Uh, they're in the FM band, and I unfortunately don't have the exact figures, which goes out to about a uh, 10 digit number, but they're both in the kilohertz, uh, kilohertz and megahertz range in the FM band. You're talking about the commercial broadcast FM band? <laughs> this is a band uh, I was able to, um, let's see how to put this. 
I was able to view a secret uh, chart with all the frequencies from every satellite that is uh, circling our planet uh, put up by every country. And these okay. are in a category of fixed or mobile deep space frequencies. Okay, but, but when you're talking about the the frequency emission from the um, from these uh, implants, I mean, we're talking about two different things here. You're talking about a list of frequencies from satellites orbiting Earth or whatever, and I'm talking about the implants themselves apparently we'll to it. transmitting some sort of signal? Is yeah, that yes. Yes, okay. there are trans there's both in the kilohertz and megahertz range. As I said, I don't have the readings. I'd be happy to send them to you. So I'd, well, I would, in, I would very much enjoy that. Um, now, one of the things that we, one of the things we don't have, and uh, I, you know, we keep trying to get someone to donate this to us, but we have the radio frequency detector, but we don't have a radio frequency analyzer, so we can't capture the wave. Now you're talking but, about pretty, pretty big money here. If yeah, you're on an I know. The new digital ones are quite costly, but I think we could settle for an old analog one. <laughs> you know. so, you, so if you were to get a donation by somebody, you, you wouldn't be unhappy about that? Not not unhappy at all. We would certainly pass this information right back to the public where it belongs. Okay. But, uh, um, the other possibility is here, uh, and you got to consider this, uh, no, no matter what radio wave it happens to be, I really agree with Stan Friedman when he talks about SETI as being silly effort to investigate. What advanced civilization, especially when we have That's a the moon, by the way. telling us these are 80 million years older than uh, we are, are using radio waves to uh, for some kind of a communication or data collection device? That's preposterous. So there's either, either two thing, one of two things going on, if you look at it logically. Either there's a deal made where the information that's being broadcast from these objects is being received here by some earthly source, uh, and they're tapping into the information that's coming out going somewhere else. It's a piggyback sort of thing. Uh, uh, or what we have is a, again, this is more in your area than mine, so you can probably tell me, uh, scalar wave technology, uh, when it comes into our electromagnetic spectrum, we're getting a harmonic that looks like a radio wave, but rarely may not be. Well, that's, and we, that's testable. Okay. I mean, and, we, and, we, and we know that scalar waves are faster than the speed of raw light. And, and Tom Ballone, the physicist in Washington, testified before the committee that this is a way to communicate in deep space. And you don't have to wait for four years to get your answer back. Well, I, I deal in radio waves that go at the speed of light or just uh, touch below it. Not with scalar waves, so I don't know a thing about scalar waves. Uh, you're saying they're faster than light. That's correct. I didn't know that had been proven. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's accepted uh, modern uh, technology. Uh, Tom is uh, not only a theoretical, but he's also a mechanical physicist, so uh, the things that he's investigated, uh, he's already done in the laboratory, so when he comes up with these statements, uh, then it's already been done. Well, I wasn't aware of it. I, I was aware that uh, quantum movement uh, has certainly, if there is communication, is faster than light, certainly, um, but I don't know about scalar waves, so maybe. Um, so, uh, anyway, you, uh, wh where do we move from here? Where would you like to go from here? I know you've got a lot of material up there. Well, uh, let's see. I, 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 I told you some of the things that we found uh, in the objects that we've removed with, uh, you know, more modern techniques. <laughs> let's uh, hit on a few other ones. Uh, some of the things we understand, some of the things we don't understand. And when, when we see the carbon nanotechnology involved with these orthorhombic crystals, 
uh, we know that crystals, uh, since the beginning of radio, have been a very important uh, device for the receiving of, uh, you know, uh, uh, radio uh, uh, frequencies. Uh, so this has, been, has this kind of advanced uh, crystallography, if you want to put it that way. But um, we also see objects that we don't understand. We see gold spheres that are about uh, four to 10 atoms uh, in diameter. We, we don't know what they're for. Uh, we find uh, other inclusions of uh, metals that uh, we don't know what they're for. I told you about the one atom apertures. We, we're, we're not sure what they do. Um, we all right, know- Dr. Lear, if I, if I can, let me drag you back to the question I asked, and that, that is, and you said it was a good one. What do you know about what these people report, these people who have things in them. Um, are they being told things? Are, are they aware of some communication that's being made with them? In other words, I'm looking for some clue to what these things are doing. Okay, I'll let you have it <laughs> for the full bag. <laughs> now, sure. scientifically, which you know, I like to stay with the scientific approach, uh, opinions, uh, you know, are but, fine. But not all of it has to be. I mean, if people are reporting that these things are controlling them or giving them ideas or <clears throat> communicating in some way, uh, I understand it's not scientific, but I'd love to hear it. Okay, well, we're looking at a different ball game. Uh, number one. Uh, why is the abduction phenomena going on in the first place? We have to okay. go back All right. to that. Let's do it. Uh, we know that, uh, and I've been in 42 countries in seven years, so it's relatively the same in the United States as it is in Brazil or in the Middle Eastern countries or in Africa. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, some of the uh, entities that are seen may be a little bit different, but 99%, I would say, of all abduction cases involve the taking of ova and sperm. 99%. Now, uh, who is, whoever is taking this thing uh, doesn't work for the cooking channel, and they're not making omelets. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, obviously there's, you know, you, you've got to theorize there's some kind of a genetic experiment going on. I don't, so, want to hear about, I don't want to hear about sperm and the cooking channel in the same sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry about that, couldn't resist. But anyway, um, so there's some genetic experiment going on, and uh, I think it's an experiment, which I partially agree with uh, uh, David Jacobs. I think the human race is being altered, and I can give you a number of instances where this might be a factual scenario that we are witnessing now. Uh, I remember years ago, if you remember John White, who used to put on the conferences in uh, Connecticut? Yes. He coined the term Homo Noeticus, and he right. said that the human race was eventually becoming Homo Noeticus. I think that's what the kids for the last 50 or 60 or 70 years are becoming. Uh, they know things. They know things yep. without You're right. learning. I know. So many people have said this, Doctor, uh, and they're called by various names. But I think it is fair to suggest that many, many children uh, currently alive are of a kind of a different, uh, what's the right way to say it without That's offending species. somebody? That's well, it's almost, it's, you know. It's Homo sapien becoming Homo noeticus. It's an advanced civilization. <laughs> and All right. All right. I think uh, there's a lot of examples, you know, if you want to look at the world picture. Uh, all right, all right doctor, hold it right there. We're going to take a break. It's going to be about, uh, it's the long... All right. Um, so in the big picture, we're talking about a civilization that you hadn't heard. Uh, they broke down what was in the, the, the metal itself. And uh, for it to get to such a uh, an advanced... Um, amount of breakdown um, and in that metal and the metal that was uh, in the atoms uh, it, themselves were 
from a part of the universe that was so much closer to the Big Bang, so much more advanced than us. Because it was inside a piece of metal, and it was found in some person's body as, as early as 40 years ago.